then. So I'm going to create a small terrain because my focus here is on creating the biome, not the terrain itself. So I'm going to make it nice and small so it's good and and, uh, and uh, responsive. I'm going to use the uh, world designer as well, just because it's easy. Um, all right. Uh, so I want a fairly hilly environment um, i'm just going to turn off the flying camera here just in case i accidentally add the runtime at some point which i've done in the past and i have my own runtime i have a, an automated camera that i've been working on which is pretty cool uh, which i'll add in shortly and have a look at it's kind of an ai driven camera although calling it ai is a bit of a stretch at the moment um, but it does go looking for interesting places. All right, so uh, world shape is fine. I'll leave that as it is. Um, let's just go. Actually, I want to put some noise in here. Let's make it ridges. And let's increase that scale a bit. Uh, actually, let's decrease the scale a bit because I'm going to have water. Um, and then let's see, I don't want any islands, we'll have a fair few rivers, not too many mountains, don't want any messes, we'll have some valleys and we'll have some plains. Let's have a look what we get. So I'm not really going after a really good terrain here, I just want something with hills and flats in. So that's too hilly. Uh, let's reduce the mountains and the hills a bit. Okay, that's getting better. We've got some steepish bits at the top there. Maybe increase the planes a little. There we go. That's better. Not quite so severe. Yep, that's good. We'll go with that. So uh, generate the world. Go on, click. So um, Yolan, um, lots of rocks and pointy mountains. Yeah, you like the rocks and pointy mountains, don't you? <laughs> I'm more of a rolling hills kind of person, although I do have plenty of rocks in this one, but it's not quite your style. Um, I'm actually working in HDRP here, Yolan, uh, and it's the first time that I've used Gaia Pro in HDRP, and it is the first time that I've not crashed out. So um, that's probably a good sign. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but I've not crashed out, so looking good. Right, let's get off the world designer. Yep, good. So let's get on with this biome. So it's going to be nature manufacture. Yeah, that's true. The mountains around here are good. I do like the mountains up here. I spent a lot of time in the Highlands of Scotland. And, and if you go over Stevens Pass here, they feel fairly similar to, to, to up there. Only you haven't got the glaciated valleys, but the steep pointy mountains are good. Super stable during your last three streams. That's good. It must be an HDRP versus standard then. Um, that can be the only uh, only reason. Yeah, I'm not in 2021. I'm in 2020. Um, so uh, that seems okay, apart from those uh, endless um, compilation and so on. All right, new pot, new spawner. So let's add in a spawner. So the way I tend to do these things. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to create one. The way I tend to do things with spawners is I I separate them out. I don't put them all in one like uh, like um, the guy at the Procedure Worlds team seem to do. Although they are starting to move away from that. Um, so the first thing that I do is uh, I put in just four base rough textures and then build up from there. So I'm actually going to be using all three of Nature Manufacturer's packs here. Well, certainly in forest and meadow, probably some mountain as well. Uh, so we need to start out with some sandy ground. I think sand might be... Yeah, sand is in the 
forest. Sand, there's the sand. Oh, I forgot to lock the inspector here. Okay, sand. And the normals. Let's put that on the terrain. All right, so we have our very first texture. Lovely. Let's leave that as is and add a new texture in. An excuse to go over Stephen's Pass. Uh, it's beautiful. That's good enough, isn't it? You'd go for a beer in, uh, what's it called? Levensworth. And a, a Bratwurst. So 360, we're, we're talking about, uh, we both, Yolan and I live in the Pacific Northwest, so we're talking about some of the, uh, the nice scenery around here. Uh, think of any nice, pretty mountains uh, with a narrow pass over, and you're in where we're talking about. All right, so this one is going to be my initial grass. So let's have a look at what we've got going on here. We'll start with a height map, I think. Okay, and I don't want it up there. I want it from almost from the bottom. but not to the top. Okay, and then the top. Probably something like that. Okay. Uh, okay, grass. I want the meadow grass here. And the normal. Let's try spawning. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Might be a little dense up at the top here. Yeah, it's a bit too dense up at the top there. Let's just bring that way down. It's a bit too severe now, isn't it? Okay, it's looking better, but I need to bring that up a little. All right, let's spawn that. That's more like it. Okay, now I want a different grass on the top there, but let's go have a look down here. I'm just going to move the camera down to here so I can see what's going on from down here too. That looks okay. So let's put another grass up at the top here. So I tend to go really quick initially with these things and then um, I kind of tune for days and hours on end. Um, my goal is to just get something that works initially. Make that a colour we can see. Oh, I never fitted the spawner look. Let's do that. Fit to terrain. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to want to do the same thing with a height map, height mask rather. Um, bring it down a little. Okay, and drop off a little less deeply. Okay, looks good. Let's try spawning. There we go. Might be a little strong, but we're going to have some rocks and I'm going to do some things with the other grasses up there in a few minutes. Uh, very rare mountains here. Old, oldest terrain on earth. Is it? Wow. 
All plains and thank God beaches. Oh yeah, you got a lot of beaches, or at least in some areas. Um, yeah, when I was, uh, I'm going to show my age a bit here. When I was growing up, Neighbours was a big thing on British TV. And we were always very, very jealous of the beach scenes. You don't get beaches like that in Britain, I can assure you. You don't get weather like that in, in Britain either, for that matter, normally. All right, rocks. I want cliff faces now. So this is going to be the last of my base textures. Uh, there are no decent cliffs in the nature manufacture packs. So I'm going to start by using one from the uh, procedural worlds pack. Uh, oh no, these aren't procedural worlds. Where are these from? Oh, they're from Matt Magic. Okay, I'll skip those. I'll stick to just Matt Magic, uh, Nature Manufacture and Procedural Worlds. Uh, don't want Mossy. So I guess it's going to be this one. Oops, missed. And the normals. And this one is going to be on a slope mask okay that's way too much so what I like to do with these curves is make them much less curvy so that you've got kind of a lot of breaks. Let's be able to see it better if I zoom in on somewhere like this. So I have a lot of ups and downs like this. And what it does is it, it gives without putting noise in it, which I always find is a bit too random, especially for rocks, um, is it gives these kind of bands here um, so this here is likely that band there um, that will do for now let's give that a spawn and see what we get okay that looks better don't really like this rock it's too dark well actually too light <laughs> um, let's try this one yeah that's it's better color but i don't like the the texture on it you know i do like the rock in here it's not that one though the dark one there we go and give it the right height mark so i am actually using the one from uh, map magic here Okay, that's too strong now. So that is easy to fix. Better. I'm going to reduce the strength of this on the slopes. invert that one and actually let's put it the right way around and subtract it and then that allows me to just give some spotty bits like that yeah that looks better let's have a look there we go that's better don't worry about that tiling we'll deal with that later on all right so now it's just looking a single bit a single color and we could do with a bit more variety down here so i'll do that in a minute uh yeah i like the 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 map magic cliff textures too um they could they could i've not used them very well here like i say i'll tweak around on them later i've probably got the scale of it wrong as well um yeah there you go higher res that's uh that's why we're seeing all of that texture uh, um tiling uh <laughs> they work well for large mountains that's why you like them then 
uh, in the distance they definitely do work uh, so you never thought of what the, the um, is that the wavy line on the curve that, that you never thought of it's one of my favorite little tricks that um, I, I by the time I've finished doing this that wavy line is going to be really there's going to be a lot of points along it you can see a lot of effect here of what it's doing I'll show you another trick a scale of 50 to 10 really that's going to be too high for this but let's just see 50 to 100 well let's put it at 50 because I think 100 is going to be way too high isn't it oh no look at that that actually isn't that bad even fairly close up it's just these here it needs to reduce the um, the normal scale don't I oh that isn't in the normal scale that's actually on the texture itself hmm can't reduce it down to maybe 25 that's too intense that line that's better yeah that's a lot better even even though it's a lot smaller than yours yeah cts uh is is what i'll well i probably won't put cts in i'm gonna wheel myself away from that yeah it is looking pretty good 360 i agree but there's a lot we can do so a little bit of tweaking on this before i move on to starting with the next biome which will be the trees but i want to add in some more of the green stuff now the way i do this is i think about i try to think about how would it grow in nature and it wouldn't just not appear above these levels here why am i not oh because i've got an image mask um it, it let me turn that off for a minute so we can view it properly it wouldn't just not appear up here it would just be less now what most people seem to do is they put a noise mask in um yeah i agree on the cts thing but it, it just wasn't going to get updated to hdrp so they decided to start again with it it was it was pretty much the the message that i got from both parties involved with it um it's a shame there's a promise of something coming but yeah so anyway what most people do is they add a noise mask in like this um uh but that needs to i would have to mask it separately to get it in on the top so that's not what i'm going to do here what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to use the concave stuff and i need to put this up above the height mask turn the height mask off for a moment so you can see that you you get some of it up at the top here and i want to get more of it up at the top so this is where water is going to collect where you're going to get more lush grass and so on so i still that's what the problem is i still have the curve from the noise mask i wondered why it was acting a bit weird there we go um so just play around with the feature size so i'm trying to get these runoffs here um and i probably want to increase the minimum intensity a bit uh, maybe not the minimum put a little bit up the scale so now we've got a fairly intense uh patchwork here so if I now turn my height mask back on and rather than multiply, I add. Now you see I'm going to get some patching up at the top there, which isn't just random, which is what a noise mask would do. Spawn. And so now we straight away, we get a bit more of a, a break up in the color at the top here. You see, we've got these intent, more intense uh, green grass areas should be some in that runoff there yeah you see it's fairly subtle but when you get in close it makes quite a difference and then we're going to do something similar at the bottom with the other grass so dry grass this would be so we're going to add in let's turn both of these off at the moment preview it there we go and we're going to add in a concave convex and 
we want the reverse of what we're getting so minus one so these are now the raised areas which would have less water and therefore be more dry but i don't want them quite as pronounced as that quite you know following the ridges that's not how it would work the water would drain off and then it would go into the, uh, the it would create lusher areas below okay and if i move that up above the height mask it just reduces the effect at the top there okay let's see does that give us a little more coloring yeah you see we now have these areas there was a little bit down here but it was more of a kind of a uniform fading in whereas now it's uh it's following these ridges a little bit and if we come in close you can see that to me looks reasonably natural all right there's a lot more playing around that i can do with that but that is enough for now so save uh, what we got here micro splat is great but there's some things i haven't quite been able to replicate yeah cts is great and it just plug it back in i do keep meaning to actually um take a look at uh what is it called is it real terrain summit or other it's really old but it's still going and i've had it for years i've not actually i've no i haven't had it for years i've thought about buying it for years i never did but then i won it in one of messy streams um and i haven't really played with it i don't know if you know anything about it while you're thinking about that i am going to unlock that and add a new spawner and uh, let's just name that other spawner as base terrain and this is going to be my lowland trees so i will have another one later which is the highland trees so these are going to be the trees at the nature manufacture pack possibly with some forest trees in there as well we'll see how it looks uh, so this is going to be a terrain tree and let's find nature manufacture or meadow environment trees i'm not using visual studio so we'll skip those <laughs> know about what yeah daughters in the ear far more important um is it relief terrain pack or something like that um it's a really old shader for terrain i was wondering if you've ever used it and if you know it's any good because i have it sitting in my collection and i don't know that i've ever used it which is terrible because i won it in a messy stream and i should have reviewed it as a result i haven't done it yet uh let's go with high quality because this biome is going to be for uh it's not going to be for gameplay it's going to be for videos so i'm going to go with high quality on everything here um <coughs> excuse me and let's start with just one tree and let's bring up another inspector over here so we can have a look at it Come on, open up. There we go. That looks like they're young trees, aren't they? There we go. We'll go with that one to start with. And let's have a look. Fit to terrain. All right, we'll start with the height map here. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I am going to do my usual trick, which is to create biome spawner rules. Because I know I only want these to appear on the lowlands. So I am going to put a height map on everything. I'm going to invert that. Uh, let's do that. Okay, I don't want it at the very bottom. Whoa, wrong one. Ugh. I hate it when I do this. 
There we go. It's not that hard to recover. It's just one of those things that annoys me when I do it. I don't know why I did that on the curve anyway. There was no need to do that on the curve. Okay, I don't want it all the way down to sea level. Oops. Oh, I did need to do that on the curve. I always forget that this carries on past the, oh, I've done it again, carries on past the, uh, the zero point. And it took me forever to figure that out in the first time. Uh, in fact, I had to go to support to have it explained to me. They were very patient with my idiocy, I have to admit. Okay. Where's my water plane gone? Uh, first one you had, much harder than CTS. Everything's harder than CTS, though. I was really happy when CTS came out because of all, yeah, exactly. And Microsplat certainly is not <laughs> easy like CTS was. I think you can get much more varied results. Um, with uh, with Microsplat, but it is horribly difficult to work with, which is of course why you get good results. I'm trying to figure out where my um, water plane has gone. I know I didn't spawn in the water. I'm trying to. Oh, there it is. It's come back now. Why did that go? Hmm. <laughs> Weird. All right. One of those vagaries all right that's probably a little bit too low there we go that's looking a little bit better all right that looks good and we give it a lower percentage we want it to be reasonably sparse and let's just oh let's put in a slope mask actually let's put the slope mask up here as well So when I'm doing the slope mass on these, I find that you need two different setups, one for the most of the trees and then another one for the ones that have roots. Otherwise you get trees with roots sticking out the side. So I put the main one in this biome mask here. And then if this is a tree with roots, I'll need to put one in at the bottom here as well. But uh, we'll worry about that later on. That's far too sparse. I am going to, of course, put more trees in later, but I do want it to be wooded. That's better. Okay, that looks reasonably okay. I do, however, want to limit them coming in on this terrain so let's put a texture map in and we're going to subtract and we're going to subtract the second grass which is the this grayish one here a brownish one i should say yeah i see you're not getting any here now if i turn that off you will get them spawn in there. So that'll just thin out those areas, which is uh, which is what we're after. So let's spawn again. Okay, it's random of course, so it's difficult to see how much I've impacted that, but that should be okay. Uh, right, next up, let's duplicate that. Can't duplicate it. Oh, okay. Fine. 
there's nothing in it this is one of the advantages of um not using not setting up these masks inside of each individual tree it appears for all of them now uh, so let's do this one and we're gonna increase this the spacing okay color looks a bit off I bet it's put Gaia's shaders in, not nature manufacturers. I'll have to deal with that later. Okay, that looks okay for now. And again, as with before, the goal is to just go quickly. Um, it isn't to get a perfect uh, result straight out of the box. What does this tree look like? nice and bushy so we'll have plenty of those and what does this one look like a mm, few of that one I think now this one has roots see so we're probably going to have to add in a different slope spawner for this one so let's leave the location increment low to increase the chances of it coming on a, a, a near a um, slope and what we're looking for is that see there are the roots come out and it looks pretty ugly there are a number of ways you can fix this like but it it, it you put in dropping the uh, tree into the soil will do it but then you lose the nice looking roots I think this is one up here as well you lose the nice looking roots effect that you get on the flat ground so that I don't like to do so what I'm gonna do is put a mask on here Let's visualize this why am I not seeing that Wow not got a lot to uh, oh I'll put an image mask on it that's why <laughs> yeah, that's silly of you. yeah that is silly of me isn't it yeah. <laughs> um, all right so this is a ridge you see so like we did before with the concave convex we can find the ridges and stop it appearing on thin ridges that's the first thing that we'll do um, and I'm going to invert that initially so I can see them. And that looks far too. Oh no, that's the way I want to go, but I want to reduce, the f increase, no, decrease the feature size. Okay, go back in here again. Don't know that this one's going to work in this case, and I've lost my tree. Turn that off so I can see it again. That one guilty. That one's okay. There it is. So I think this one's going to have to be a slope mask, which was the other thing that I wanted to put in there to stop this from happening. Oops. Well, I can't drag it. There we go. Okay. And the problem here is that it's not actually on the slope. Hmm. Just went to take a, a drink there and it's the wrong one. It's not my glass of water. It's an old glass of whiskey that I've not put away. It's empty, of course.
I'll have to keep this in mind for MM. What the uh, roots appearing. Yeah. Yes, it was a very nice whiskey 360, and I'm I'm now have the smell in my nose and thinking I need to have a whiskey, but not just yet. Um. All right, so the slope isn't really working for me on this one. It is, uh, it is going to be able to filter out these kinds of areas because they're on a slope. But this is actually a flat. So is there a ridge? No, there isn't. Yep. So there you go, um, Yolan. You said that you should be able to build a ridge one. We need a ridge one. Um, you can, ca you can get the effect with the concave, but. It's not quite as easy as it should be. Uh, it would, does help if I have it on concave rather than convex. I mean convex rather than concave. That was weird. It's kind of doing the opposite that I would expect it to do. Okay. No, that's not what I'm doing. Um, so I am finding it there. That's pretty good, actually. That is pretty close to what I want to do. So it's not going to spawn here because of the slope mask. So, but it's only taking out this bit here. So that means I want a larger feature size, doesn't it? Okay, have I taken the whole thing out? Ah, I think I got it. All right, that one was a fiddly one. Normally, that's a lot easier. I just happened to pick a really difficult tree to do, but I think we're probably all right with that now. All right, we're not getting any there, but of course it's random, so they could just be picking it away off. What does cliffs look like there? Ugh. Let's pretend we didn't see that, eh? Go back to that later. Um, all right. So we can get on with doing some more. Now I know how to do the roots thing on this particular map. Um, it does change, of course. I, I build biomes for reuse. And the reality is, of course, that it does change a lot for individual. You, you have to go in and tweak them. You can't just reuse them. Um unless you have really generic setups uh, like they do with the ones that they include procedural world to include they're really kind of generic they don't do any of the smart stuff which I hopefully will get time to do tonight like changing the textures under trees and things like that so what do we look like I forgot to change the jitter distance on these Let's see what we get. The last four, I didn't do the jitter distance. Yeah, it's way too dense. You can, of course, change the density of the trees by changing the density on the spawner, but that changes them all. And I like to get it roughly how I want it using the um, location increment, not the jitter di distance. Um, and then use the uh, density to manage the uh, during gameplay. So you get the relative densities correct first and then use the density spawning for in gameplay itself on the terrain that is. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing it the other way. It's just the way I work. And then I believe this last one is actually a dead one. Yeah, so I don't want many of these at all. And I will also put in a terrain texture and add back in what we took out before. So what this is going to do is on the... I know why I was having trouble before. I didn't do this. You need to put the global spawner in and then that allows you to add like that you see that's what i was doing wrong before so i managed to achieve it just purely by accident uh, i'll go back and look at that in a minute 
lunch time for you is it all right excellent well i'll probably be editing some of this down i'm actually writing a tutorial on how to do this which is one reason why i'm building this so i'll probably be adding it down to some tutorial videos if it's something that you're interested in have a good lunch all right so let's go back to that one i was mucking up earlier um it was this one i believe yeah turn off that other preview now if I leave that exactly as it was and I add in the global spawner mask stack and I make that subtract yeah I didn't invert it let's just check that yeah there we go but it's too extreme now so we want to reduce that. There we go. Let's just go in and have a look at some of these ridges here. That's probably a bit too much. Oh, I've got to mux it up, haven't I? Hmm. Okay, I know what I want to do. I'm gonna make it come in faster. Find the sweet spot. I'm just not getting anywhere with this tonight, am I? Should have stuck with what I had. reasonable if I increase the minimum fitness it will probably avoid that I need to increase the increment too all right let's see what we get that's better too many dead trees three all at once that's not good why have we got so many dead trees I thought I'd reduce that and why have we got some all the way up at the top? What have I done there? Um, 67, 8. They're the dead ones. Why have we got so many? And why have I got some up at the top? It's because I put the terrain texture in and I've got it on add. It should be smaller than, uh, greater than rather. Yeah, I forgot I put this texture up at the top, so I'm going to need to put that before the global texture and then make that uh, add and put in a height map, height mask. There we go. All right, that's better. And then I want to increase minimum fitness and I didn't increase the location increment, which is why I got so many of them. Okay, that's looking better. Bit bland here. That might just be the spawn. Or it might be that my height is too. Yeah, it looks like my height is too vicious. Let's go up here and visualize, say, that one. Yeah, I could do with a bit more on that plane there. Okay, let's try that. That's better. All right, so. All right, cool. 
So, Yolan, if you're still there, I'm going to put in my super cool AI camera thing. Uh, it's brand new, so this is the point at which I break everything. But, let's see. Uh, tools, AI, automated camera. Okay, so what it's done is it's put a Cine machine camera in. And it's put in this follow target here, which I need to... Uh, okay, it's putting it at the origin, which is not good. It's supposed to be putting it at the center of the terrain. But that's okay. We can just stick it in somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Excellent, you're still here. This is my super stuff. I'm really pleased with this. So that's the follow cam. It will follow that. And then you've got a waypoint spawner, which if I center that on the terrain like so and have a look at the height of it height's not that critical because at the moment it uh, will always spawn them above the um, oops doing the wrong thing I spawn them above the, a certain distance above the ground so the height of the thing doesn't actually matter at the moment but it will do when I've done a little bit more work on it but what happens at the moment is it's going to spawn um, it's going to spawn some waypoints at random inside of that space and the camera will wander around um, and there it goes it's on quite a fast thing at the moment so it will avoid trees and it'll navigate around trees we're probably not going to see that because there's no dense trees here at the minute um, but it'll it, it's got a really smooth flow to it like this it does the ai part is that it actually tries to analyze what it's going to see when it goes to one of the waypoints and so it tries to pick the best uh, kind of finishing position um, this one looks really boring right now because a we're going uphill so we don't see much and b there's nothing to look at as we go uphill um, but you do see here how it's animating it'll be going up and over this hill and if you had a rock here it would it would navigate nicely over the rock or it would go around it depending uh, all of the intelligence for the movement is done by sensor toolkit which is awesome working on fuzzy search for a, 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 a asset manager cool all right so my camera is in and working so that's good need to do something a bit more interesting to look at first so let's do a new oh i didn't put any of the young trees in did i um let's put i thought I'd, oh yeah i did name it lowland trees here we go uh, let's put some of the young trees in. And that one. Now, with the young trees, what I'm going to do is not have them appear underneath or near the big trees. Because the big trees will be sucking up all of the water. And when you do that, what will happen is, like here where there's two trees together, you might get a young one in between, which is precisely what happens um, at the uh, in nature. And the way you go about that, I should have just put one in, actually, because I'm going to need to duplicate these later, um, is you put in this cool mask i don't know if you've used this mask yet but it is one of the best you put in a collision mask it's not a collision mask yeah a collision mask and then you add in the collisions that you want it to 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 um, focus on so i want it to look at the bigger trees which are one two and three right and then I want to invert each of those and what it's done is it's calculated the radius of the tree bounding box <laughs> yes that's exactly what I'm saying I am trying to 
build the nice um, relationship system for trees. I could make that a lot. What so that love hate asset? We can make it love hate for trees. Um, all right. So let's first of all make sure. Yeah, we have that. I've got it on multiply. That's what the problem is. Um, subtract rather, and I inverted them for some strange reason. Right. So you can see how it's picking out these trees here and it looks like actually these aren't the larger trees which is a a shame which trees do I want I want that one definitely let's try going into number six yay beginning to remember which ones they are and that one I think it must be eight then no wrong one I do want three it must be the first one that I don't want Okay, so they're both gone now and we do have these trees so that'll do for now I'll fine-tune later right so now what I do is I expand this out and you can do it by increasing here but I find a better way of doing it is by this grow shrink here and we're gonna make it grow like that we're going to reduce the maximum here okay so you see how we've got this ring well that's what I'm after but I want it to be bigger than that and then I'm going to invert this So that, oops, wrong, I invert it like that. And that will now need to be an add, well, uh, multiply. There we go. And I didn't want to invert it, I had it wrong. What am I doing? Oh, I've got it the wrong way. I've got the grow and shrink in. There we go. I've got the grow and shrink wrong. So we've got this area here where it's not going to spawn which is under the trees because it's sucking up the water. But we, where we had that gap, we still have the, uh, the items here. Hang on one minute, my dog's trying to get in. Oh, Kaiser. Come on then, Kaiser, in you come. Poor Kaiser has been shut out. He doesn't like being outside. He's got to be in with the peoples. Uh, all right, so it's not going to go close, but it's got a higher chance of going into the rim areas around it. So if I now... Why can't I duplicate the whole spawner? That's annoying. Thought you could. Swear you could. But according to this, I can only duplicate individual masks. Okay, well, I will come back to it. So there we go. You can see the precise effect that we wanted there. There's perhaps too many of them, but the small trees are coming in close. And where there aren't any trees, they're less populous. We'll go to a flat area, you should see over here. We've got more coming in because we're adding in that extra signal. That one's out on its own, which does happen. You get birds moving stuff, but generally they're appearing where other trees are and not appearing close to the trees, they're appearing on the edges. All right. Next up, grasses. Now the question is, am I going to use this flora system? I don't know anything about it. What do I have to do to use the flora system? Have you used it? Uh, okay, where are we? Grass. Let's start out with a terrain mask, or texture mask rather. Why 
why I can't see the texture mask. Oh, because it's called a terrain texture. Dope. All right. Put in the spawner so we can visualize it. Looks good. I would like it a little more intense up here. So let's bring this up a little. There we go. You not use the floral system, okay. Um, well, I know there's a menu option for it. What does that do? Show flora tutorials. All right. Uh, that's annoying. You can't see what I've gone to, but it's basically gone to the procedural world page with products not tutorials so i'll click on the product and it's taken me through to the documentation again not tutorials now i don't know the way around my way around their new site well it's not that new anymore there are new to no tutorials for flora all right well let's just do it and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> why not so this is going to be a grass train detail there we go and let's go to the meadows first do we do the prefabs yeah let's do the prefabs since I'm worried it isn't going to work and I'm not worried about performance here so let's spawn them in as trees grasses there we go uh, I didn't lock the inspector okay I don't want those ah there we go that's shorter ones that's what I want so three four start with three and four Not the crosses ones. Okay, let's use two in the cross. Oh, you got detailed one too. We'll go with details. All right, detailed one. Okay, one point five is way too big. Uh, we want lots of them. Maybe not every centimetre. Let's see what happens when I do this. I don't, I've got a feeling this isn't going to work too well. But it's procedural, so easy enough to get rid of. Well, it looks alright in the camera down there. That actually doesn't look too bad, does it? Let's see what it looks like with movement. Obviously want it more spread out when I have variety, but... For a first uh, first attempt, that doesn't look too bad. Need more trees. Need some highland trees coming in up there. Okay, that'll do for a start. So let's put more grasses in then. Let's go with the other detailed. And let's reduce the increment here. Let's reduce the chance of it spawning. Actually, let's do the same increment, but lower spawning chance should be all right. I want less of these because these ones are tall. Spawn. Ooh, way too many. He's one of these big tall things, I want very few of them. Okay, that looks all right. All right, so too much grass under the trees. 
So what I'm going to do here, I'd forgotten a step. I'm going to go back and create another spawner. Oh. Uh, create another spawner, move it up before that one. Okay, and this is going to be called tree ground textures. So what I want to do is change the ground texture underneath these trees and then I can use that to filter out the grasses where the trees are. I could of course use collisions um, but I, I prefer to do it this way because it gives a little bit more flexibility. You can go and paint in the texture later and it will affect the spawning of the grass. All right, so uh, I want the trees collision mask. I've got, I think it's 12 trees. I need to visualize. got nine in where's no oh, there isn't a nine it goes back to a zero because of the um, small ones okay so now we're not going to get any grass down here or at least we won't once we spawned in the texture and filtered that out so I need to put a texture in here now train texture got that already we're in the meadow, d -d 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 ground, where's the ground textures? Ground, uh, forest, ground, grass. Okay, and then invert that. not getting it around those tiny trees that was an accident that's fine why are we getting it here though that's weird not sure why we're getting these little splotches New tree one. What's new tree one? It's weird. Maybe it's just. A leftover from a previous spawn that somehow didn't get cleared out. No, they're still there. Oh, I didn't refresh that, did I? Nope, still there. That is very strange. Well, let's just get rid of that one. Again, I will go through and tune at a later date. So, spawn this texture. So now you can see we have the different texture below the trees. Might be a little bit too intense. Let's just drop it down a little. actually see any difference there let's see what it's like when I finish doing the grass so now we go, go back to the grasses we we're working on and we're going to subtract the terrain texture which is the forest ground 
who else? Ground Forest Meadow, there we go. Okay, so we'll look at that. Okay, that's going to give no grass under the trees at all. That's not quite what we're after. So we're going to up this a bit. Oops, I mean lower this because we're subtracting it. spawn that's better so a little bit patch here and there okay yeah I have no problem with their YouTube videos um, that, that's fine it's just the link in the uh, asset store the link in the um, menu here took me to a useless page that didn't have a link to the video pages on it i could have just gone to youtube atlantica alpha game hello what is the difference between spawn local and spawn world well in the in the world that i'm doing right now there is no difference because i only have one terrain in this world i'm just working on a one very small terrain because i'm just focusing on the biome but if you're creating a world that has multiple terrains in so say you've got a 16 by 16 world um you can't you shouldn't have that as one terrain uh, you would break that up into uh, a number of, of trains maybe uh, one kilometer by one kilometer each so you would have 16 by 16 one kilometer by one kilometer so spawn local will spawn onto just one of those terrains and will be nice and quick spawn world will spawn onto all 16 so obviously it takes time so it's it's just to make it work more quickly for you um when you when you've got a, a large world to work on does that make sense all right uh add a new oh, let's get some more grasses in here um let's lock that look at that yep that's a nice one and let's reduce location incrementally reduce the probability of spawning and spawn so i'm spawning local and you see i'm doing a lot of, of grass spawning here but it's pretty instant because it's just a small terrain whereas if i had a large terrain that would be uh that would take a, a lot of time up all right i don't see any of that new grass did it, it spawned a thousand and eighty four compared to fifty five thousand <laughs> oh look this is new tree one as well that's why that collision thing was getting confused it was actually colliding with the grass so i did want to turn it off and get rid of it that's all right just picked up the wrong name it wasn't a tree at all all right so why so few of those being spawned um guess it's my location increment isn't it uh, maybe increase that to 55 because this is a fairly small grass I think there we go now we've got some okay so the problem I've got here now is there's no it's not breaking up in any way so now I want to put some noise in and I'm going to do the noise not do the noise on the main spawner up here but do it on the individual grasses um, so that I've got control over each individual grass. So let's visualize this. Stick in the global spawner and then add in a noise mask. OK. 
Okay. I want it to be fairly large on this one. There we go. And then take that. Is that one copy? Yep. Paste it in. actually have it appearing in the same place because these three grasses are all quite similar and then I'll invert it for the next set of grasses Okay, so now when I spawn there should be some more sparse areas without quite so much grass in. Oh, it's not really not really noticeable. Well, you can see it thinning out here, for example, but I don't know that I've achieved what I wanted there. Kind of just made it more sparse. So let's should have got it right with one of them first and then copied those across that's yeah I think I've gone with too much um, oh god I've gone blind there we go not literally don't panic um, metaphorically and then I want to Reduce. Oh, it's not the transforms. I want to increase the amplitude and then reduce the persistence. There we go. So now we've got some dense areas and some really light areas. I'll be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing with noise. Um, so I just play until I see something I like. Some people probably know what each of these do I know theoretically what they each do but in practice I have trouble visualizing in my mind what's going to happen when I change one of these things I'm getting better at it with time but I still I'm just guessing in reality I suspect everybody is just guessing except somebody who uses map magic like Yolan because noise masks are so important in map magic that I suspect that you learn quite quickly they're less important in Gaia okay let's try that there we go that's better you can see it even without going down low You've got a nice dense area there and quite a soft area here much better all right let's have a quick look at what that looks like so it looks like we're in a, a fairly light area and then coming straight into a much more dense area that's looking good as we add more grasses and things in and bushes and rocks and things this is going to start to to fill out but at this stage we have enough grass to give us a feel for where things are going to be coming in so it is time to add the highland trees in now so go back to our biome create a new spawner and now let's name this as to highland trees and bring it up above the grass because the grass is going to be affected by this uh, and also above the tree ground textures because we're going to add in uh, actually I think I might have those as separate let's see how it plays out so I'm going to do it below there for now uh, now we're going to use the forest environment trees so trees where's my trees beech trees okay fooling me by putting it under b 
All right, Highland Trees. Not really Highland because it's it's only a fairly small map, but it will give me an idea. Definitely want it dense here where the green grass is and kind of building up into these areas here and I want it to be good forested areas. So let's get that started. Fit to terrain. Put a global height map in and bring it down. looks reasonable yep that looks reasonable so then we'll use a texture mask this is why I do the textures as a base texture early on because it's given me straight away that that thing that we did with the convex in the tops there is giving me an area where I want to have strong woods so I'm going to go in and get the lush grass. And you can see it's really dense here, but I've lost it here. And that's because we're on multiply rather than add. Uh, greater than is better than add, so that we've got this kind of speckled bit here. But it does bring it in down at the bottom, so I actually want to do that the other way around, don't I? Hmm, just think about this for a moment. My height mask is correct. That's correct. I don't want the stuff in the bottom here to come in. Only in the top. So, there we go get it in the water but I'm not worried about that actually I am because it'll come up above the water won't it I shouldn't be getting any grass down there why am I getting grass down there let's go back to that that is a problem with my base textures and it's this grass here I'm not getting any down there. Uh, yeah, there isn't any. All right, so it's not coming in because of the grass terrain. What did I have it set at? Oh, I haven't got my height mask on. <laughs> All right. I know we inverted that, that's not what I wanted. I'll keep putting it on multiply. All right, I'm getting myself horribly confused. Maybe I do need that whiskey after all. Um, okay. Turn the height mask off so I can see what I've got. I do want that. I've already got it up on the top. I don't want it on the bottom. So if I invert it, that is correct. But then I'm taking out that stuff. So I want to subtract. There we go. There we go. Okay, but that's not going to be a big enough area so we will add a grow and shrink in here and we will grow it like that that's what we'll do okay might be coming in a bit low but let's see how we get on um, Find a nice big beach to put in. 
that one will do. Oh, still got terrain texture here, whereas we want a tree. And let's just leave that as default for now. Okay, yeah, it's coming in too low, but we do have that collection up at the top and it is increasing up here. So we just need to play with that height mask a little. Maybe like that. That's better. Got merging of the tree lines here. maybe bring the lowland trees down a little as well let's try that yeah there we go now the textures are all wrong because i've moved the trees but we now have two distinct bands with a little bit of a merging area. So let's just go back to the biome and spawn everything just to reset the textures and everything. Okay, that's looking okay. All right, so let's get the rest of these beech trees in. All right, beech trees. Let's put all of the core trees in first. I'm not going to set up any of the uh, size rules or anything. I'm just going to go with the default for now. As I keep saying, I keep coming back to these things and improving on them almost forever really is, is the honest thing I import them into each individual world that I want to work on and they get tweaked for each individual world so there's very little point in making it perfect in the test world like this because you're only going to go in and tweak it anyway for the specifics of the uh, of the final world okay so that's going to be way too many trees but you know, i like trees yeah way too many trees oh and they're coming down a bit low too um way way too many we'll start off with the dead ones There's far too many there however before i fix that let's put it on play and have a look at how the AI camera deals with this many trees. Now, in theory, it should neatly navigate around those trees. Um, in practice, it works pretty well, actually. I've done quite a lot of testing with it. Um, probably recorded, I know, a good four or five hours of footage. Um, it does occasionally get stuck, and I haven't quite worked out why. But for the most part, it works pretty well. I don't know why I did that. I've got full screen on, but never mind. So I do need to make it look more uphill. And we've got this problem here with the, the roots sticking out. So I'll have to deal with that. So you notice how it avoided that tree nicely. So I want to stop these spawning on the uh, slopes. I forgot to put a slope filter on. Uh, also going to need to stop the ones with big roots coming onto the slopes there. Uh, we've got some nice soil at the top here. I haven't done the texturing underneath these trees, so I'll have to do that. But the camera is behaving nicely. It's not had much of a challenge yet. Obviously need some bushes and, and grasses up here to be 
because it's starting to come together, I think. Yeah. Oh, here we go. This should be a test of the AI. Nice. It dodged the trunk. I don't know if there was a collider. Well, it's a tree, a train tree, so there was a collider on it. Okay. All right. So that looks reasonably good. I think I want to thin those trees out a fair bit. And I want to do the textures underneath those trees as well. So to thin these out, I, th I think I definitely want fewer of the dead trees, which are the last one here. So let's increase the location increment on that and decrease the probability. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Yolan. There's a long way to go yet. Uh, I've got no flowers. Hardly any grass, uh, totally random placement of trees, um, but we're beginning to get there. No shrubs, no rocks. Uh, oh, I need the slope mask. Do you like the camera, Yolan? Um, that's my pride and joy at the moment. I did it last weekend, so it's uh, a long way from being polished, but um, I'm pretty chuffed with it. Doesn't work with buildings, unfortunately. It will it will avoid buildings, but I tried putting it in a city the other day, and it, it just couldn't navigate. I think what I'm going to do is, um, when it's in a city type of environment, I'm going to use a nav mesh. Use the nav mesh to control the general direct the route, uh, but let the AI movement actually control the movement. Um, I was, uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to achieve it, but. It sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, camera is, is good. I'm glad you said that. I mean, you couldn't say anything else because I said it was my pride and joy at the moment, so I kind of gave you no option, didn't I? Um, all right, slope mask. Um, we want to invert that. Ooh. Everything has suddenly gone horribly slow, including even moving my mouse. Oh, it's come back. Don't know what was happening there. All right. So let's turn that off for a moment. Oh, it's gone super slow. Unity, unity, unity. Don't do this to me. Oh, I know what it is. It's because I've got a grow and shrink. Let's put this in. Before. Grow and shrink is really poor on its performance um, if you're using it in a large area like this which I am and the slope mask has to go oh no it's on multiply that's why it should be on subtract let's just turn off that grow and shrink there we go uh, Oh, save. Thank you, Yolan. <laughs> yes, quite right. I'm pretty sure it's the grow and shrink, though. Um, it, it's compute intensive. So uh, it, it, it's. Uh, I'm going to turn it back on now. Yeah, that's what it is, see? It's, uh, it's pretty bad. Right, I need to put those back the other way around actually because I'd got that grow and shrink right. Let's just make sure I've got the slopes right here. I haven't. There we go. And we're subtracting, that's good. Ah! Turn the grow and shrink. Oh no, I need to turn the grow and shrink on, but I should have turned off the preview before. It's only when the preview is on because um, it's calculating it for the preview. I keep meaning to give them a procedural world some feedback on that uh, I didn't respawn did I let's respawn 
I'm not sure how much they can do about it though. I, I assume that the uh, computation is being doing, done on the CPU. Okay, we still have a bit of a problem there with those trees spawning in with the roots and uh, actually spawning in on the rock. So I was an easy and cheap way of stopping that. Going up here. Uh, I need to do it after grow and shrink, don't I? And terrain texture, subtract. Cliff. I'm not going to preview, I'm just going to hit spawn. Oh, still getting them. There must be enough of the other texture there to allow it to come through. Yeah. Okay. It's actually reduced the density up there quite a lot, hasn't it? Let's just risk going into preview again. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't like that slope mask. The rock thing will be doing me uh, will be doing that for me anyway, so okay. Turn off that preview and spawn again. I should minimise all these different pretty spawners on here so I don't have to keep scrolling up and down. There we go, we're back. And we shouldn't have any on these cliffs. Oh, we still do because of that. Okay, so... Uh, because it, That's because of the, um, the light grass texture. So I believe if we make that greater than, just collapse these things down. Okay, turn off, grow and shrink. Well, there's hardly anything there actually. Maybe I should use the same trick as I did before then which is to find the ones that have roots. Oh, blast it. You know what? I'm eager to move on. I'm going to come back and fix those later because it's quite fiddly to get those correct. And I already did it on one lot of trees earlier on. So, all right. Um, turn on, turn off the preview, turn on the grow and shrink. And I now need, now I, I'm going to do the ground textures separately or together. I'll do them separately. Because that way I can have a different, no, do I want a different texture underneath? I've gone on to five, so I can have three more without hitting performance. I want to put some roads in, so probably I can probably use the same textures under the trees, I think. So I want another nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I want those to be the beech trees. New tree one must be the first beech tree. I'll check that in a minute because that fooled me before. And let's check that. Yeah, new tree one. Let's rename that. Don't know why it does that. It seems to do it consistently. Small bug. Spawn local. Actually, I'm going to, have to spawn everything, aren't I? Because it's changing the textures. OK. 
Okay, I think we're still too dense on these trees. I'll go down and have a look in a minute. But we are not spawning underneath the textures under those trees. Why is that? Are we doing it on the ground one, the lower ones? No. Ha! Huh. That was working four, wasn't it? Let's have a look at that. Textures. Preview. Fit to terrain. Okay. Oh, I know why. Um, earlier on, I decided that I wasn't spawning it strongly enough, so I reduced the strength here and I respawned and said, yeah, that'll do. Um, but actually, I just realized I didn't uh, clear out the original textures before doing it, which means that we saw no change. Okay, so I need to increase that strength back up again. Now looks pretty good. Okay, let's try. We should be able to do it with just this spawner this time. Yeah, there we go. We have it now. See, we have the new textures underneath both types of tree. And if I do the whole biome, that will prevent the grasses spawning under those trees. Yep, you can see it here on this one already. Okay, yeah, we're definitely too dense. I don't know, though. Maybe it just needs a noise mass just to break it up a bit. What do you think, chat? If there's anybody there actually looking. Should I leave the density of the trees in the really dense part at this kind of level? And just create some breaks in the trees using a noise mask so that there'll be some patches or should I reduce the overall density of the trees so it's more like down here I definitely need to bring them up a bit they shouldn't be coming this far down so well, to give people a chance to think about that. You do like this density, so that means do it with noise. Okay. So I am... This density with patches. Okay. Well, before I do that, I just want to bring the highland trees up a bit. Oh, I should have turned off Grow and Shrink. I think what's happened is because I put grow and shrink in, they've crept down. Yeah, they have. See the difference? Um, so that means presumably I want the height mask after the grow and shrink. Because the grow and shrink I just want. Ugh, grow and shrink I just want on the textures. I keep clicking on this thing thinking I haven't clicked on it. And it takes so long to come back then. So if I put that after. Um, and then add the grow and shrink back in. That looks better. Okay, so let's spawn local. And then we'll put some noise in to thin it out. Yeah, that looks better already, in fact. So I just need a bit of noise. It's perhaps not coming down far enough here. It's a little too focused on the hill, which is actually what I want, but it should sort of merge in, shouldn't it? Um, turn that off again. And let's bring the height mass down. Oop, wrong way. <laughs> That's interesting. It's saying that it can spawn on the uh, on the trees down here i'm not quite sure what's causing that oh it's because of the terrain texture oh, that's right no because that's stone 
put this drain texture up here. Yeah, because there's no meadow grass there. Hmm. Well, it's not going to do it because the collisions are going to are going to be there anyway, so that's okay. not fit this one to the terrain there we go right okay spawn oh now i've got trees in the sea perfect yeah. <laughs> oh, i did add yeah getting these masks is it requires math and i'm, I'm not good with math Maybe put it back to the way I had it. What have I done? What have I done? Am I not... I'm not visualizing, that's what I've done. <laughs> okay. That's why you use a thousand for terrain height. Yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten about that. You, you got me to do that when I was doing the um, map magic thing and you said that same thing and I haven't carried it over to here. Yeah. Because it's fiddly, very, very fiddly, isn't it? Um, if you've not got a, a high value. I'm intrigued as to why I've got sea level coming in here, though. There shouldn't be any meadow grass below sea level, though. Why is it coming in at the bottom there? Oh, because of, because I have it like that. Oh, well, I've done it again. Ah. No calculator needed. Yeah, well, I'd still need a calculator, honestly. I, <laughs> I program computers for a living, but I can't do laugh for the, math for the life of me. I used to be good at math once. One day. <laughs> what is this thing doing? I'm confused. So I appear to have essentially be doing nothing. Oh, this is the grass terrain one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. There's more of it down the bottom there. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's remove it. And that means I can remove the grow and shrink, actually. I, I think I'm trying to get too clever with that particular approach. I still have the density that I want on the top there. And that's the kind of thing that really should be done for the specifics of the map that you're working on. Um, all right, so noise mask. And now I can visualize quickly and easily as well. All right, so I, I want to have some really strong areas. Maybe larger patches. No. There we go. That 
What does Lacernity do? Yeah, it moves things. <laughs> All right, how's that looking? Apart from a blossom on the top, which is where that bit of grass was, which was where I was hoping that I would have out them. Okay. It's not coming down the hills enough now. But I think that variety looks better. It's nice and dense in some areas. Uh, probably have it come down. Oh, blast. I hit the. Forgot to minimize the noise texture and then changed it as I scrolled past. Um, let's just bring it down the hill a bit more. Okay, much better. And then increase the amplitude of touch. All right, let's try that. That's better. That's better. We've got very definite patches of trees. Maybe bring it down. Oh, it's all right this side. That's no, just a noise because we've got this nice patch here. Let's have a look. I need to set up OBS so it detects when uh, when I go into full screen and, and automatically switches. I'm not doing that manually because I'm bound to forget. Um, working without full screen these days is, is, is just painful. Hello, Michaela. I don't know if that is how I'm supposed to pronounce your name, but that's how uh, how it came out. Welcome to the stream. I will try to tell. Glue wall make unity. Yeah, Aaron, you can figure it out and then tell me how to do it. Um, Michaela, uh, please tell Glue Wall make unity, please. Sorry, I'm not following the question. I appreciate it's a language um, thing. If you could try again, I, I might be able to grasp it the second time. Feel free to... Um, use a machine translation and paste that in if it's easier for you. Okay. It's a little bit sparse here, but I think when we've got bushes and rocks, we'll probably be okay. All right, bushes and rocks. I think think yeah i think the way to do it yolan is is probably something to do with the titles of the windows um the, that that automatic switcher thing that i shared with you a while back um you can switch when the window title changes so as long as the uh either the unity or the full screen window title um changes or or is created you should be able to pick it up and change automatically I was going to have a look at it before the stream, but uh, I, I didn't get the chance. Well, I think whatever <laughs> I didn't do. Um, I think I'm going to increase the overall density of these beech trees. Spawn density. Oh, that's the global spawn density though, isn't it? That's everything, that's no good. I'm gonna to have to go through each one individually and just slightly decrease the location increment. Oops. 
can come up with faster type in it. Uh, where are we? I don't want to spend too long fine tuning like this, as I keep saying. Uh, it's the kind of thing I want to do on the final scenery. Uh, oh, this is the dead one. Okay. Now the dead one, I I usually do this little trick with the dead one. So in my mind, a dead tree grew in healthy soil. And so consequent, but it's died because it's reached the end of its life, right? Um, and so what I like to do with the dead trees is not have many spawns. You see, there's only one spawned in this whole area. But then when you've got it about right, add in the terrain texture for lush grass. Oh, on this particular map, though, it's gonna that's going to bring them in low, isn't it? I'll multiply rather than add, I think. Um, and then that should increase yeah it, it, so that but it's going to make the dead ones come in at the bottom rather than the top so maybe greater than no it's going to bring them in down too low yeah it's the way i've set this particular map up biome up it's not really going to work well yeah i'll, I'll skip it Okay, where were we? Trees and bushes, bushes, I want bushes. So add in a spawner, make it go above the grass. Uh, I see I've got this in the wrong order. And that one wants to go there, I'm gonna rename it. The bush. All right, now bushes. Not sure whether to use the meadow or the forest bushes here. Maybe I should split them into two. Let's see what we've got in the forest bushes. Okay cherry lots of cherry oh this is the models where's the prefabs there's the prefabs these are going to look all right in the low and the highland areas so they can be used uh, what we've got in the Details, prefabs, branches, leaves, and moss. And that comes that they'll be placed manually. I, I don't procedurally place those because it just starts to look cluttered. Um, okay, let's see what we've got in the meadow environment. Bushes. Yeah, the willows are quite nice, but they're not going to work in the highlands maple same really okay so i think i'll use all of those all right now i want to be less fussy about how these spawn so let's see i think i will Oh, we're in HDRP, aren't we? I haven't got any choice. I've got to spawn them as trees. Although the, I could learn to use the flora asset. Let's have a quick look at flora. Let's we'll see what it does. Flora is a system for mass rendering details such as grass, stones, sticks, etc. on your terrain. Flora currently works in HDRP only. Can add flora to terrains from this window, but flora is also integrated into the Gaia spawners. 
look for the flora settings in the terrain detail resource settings oh okay all right so we'll look at that then i want to add these as trees actually anyway i think i'd rather wait for hglp to support the grass before i start mucking about with flora um all right okay so decision made i'm going to do it with details which means i'm going to do it in two different spawners i'm going to do it with the lowland and the highland oh your fuzzy search thing and it's super fast excellent look forward to that where are you in the queue at the moment have you looked recently oh git tabs are going to get searched too excellent package mode is useful but but git search is going to be super useful um right where am i let's put the willows in oh details train tree train modifier stamp what's that i've not seen that before oh so i can flatten the terrain or something stamping raise height oh this is cool this must be a 2021 feature. So I can flatten the terrain. I hope it's better than the modifier in Jenna. I find that to be really crude, but this looks like it might be more advanced. You got blends and mixes and things in here. Uh, mid 300s basically wrote fuzzy search generic collection indexer tonight. So now I can search all the things. That sounds cool. You uh, have you, you need somebody to test it. You're going to cut a release. I've started using Asset Manager again. I kind of drifted away from it for a while, largely because I was wasn't setting up a lot of new projects, uh, and so you know it's one of those things that you only really see when you're setting up new projects. But with this work, um, I, I've uh, I've come back to it again. Uh, let's not get too distracted by terrain modifier stamps and let's go and do our bushes. Two, three, and four. So then we're going to need a height mask. Actually, you know what? I'll just do it on the no. I'll do it on the height mask. See you, Atlantica. Yeah, I haven't started using the audio tab yet. I think largely, I know as soon as I get into doing audio, I am going to get so deep into it because um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I, I I used to be a sound engineer years ago. Um, and so uh, I, well, yes, I do know you know <laughs> because I'm often complaining about sounds and uh, reverb. In fact, I believe I did so today on that explosion thing that you sent. I had a quick listen to it and yeah, sorry, can't use it. Um, I, I had high hopes about that one because he also has some packs about in, indoor explosions and stuff like that, but the difference between an indoor and an outdoor explosion is the uh, outside explosion is the reverb effects you put on it <laughs> yeah yeah i probably bored you silly many a time over that um but you know still yeah, okay you grab it fine you want your explosions to sound like they're in a big valley wherever they are that's fine by me 
5.1 surround sound of the wrong reverb. Your brain will melt, I assure you. If you put a, a VR headset on, stick it in that thing, your brain will just reject it. It'll, it'll I don't know, probably jump out your ears, rip the VR headset off, and then hopefully jump back in your ears again. I might be exaggerating, but that's how strongly I feel. <laughs> If they made them with no reverb, I'd pay them twice the price because nobody makes them with no flaming reverb. All right, what am I doing here? I'm putting my willow down, so I want to invert that. Okay. Is there an easy way of getting the zoom back to the way it should be other than closing the window and reopening again? Okay, you not use it in VR. Well, you might get away with it if you're doing it in stereo, but I would be objecting to it. I'm just not sure that I am the... Uh, the well, no, I am sure. The, 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 we might not notice these things as in, oh, that's got too much reverb in it, but I can guarantee you your brain is rejecting it, just like when a colour of something is just off. You might not actually know why you don't like it, but you won't like it. That's what I think anyway. All right, we've got some bushes coming in. Too many. They go up the hill, so they're filling in some of that space. We'll just spread those out a little more, I think. Rather than spreading them out, I'll just reduce the chance. Let's see, how does that look? That looks a bit better. Yeah, so the reason I did it that way is you still get clumps like this occasionally. It's entirely random. Well, it's not entirely random because, of course, you've got the, uh, the, the masks in there as well. Still a bit too close. I oh, will increase, but I'm going to keep the increment the same on each one. Of course, with 100% jitter, that's kind of irrelevant. So, don't know why, but I will. Yeah, okay. Use it in Windows with no spatial audio. Whoops. Must have hit. Oh, I've gone into 2D. That's what I've done. Um, fine. That's all right. I, I will not judge you for it. At least not any more than I already have done. <laughs> all right, that looks better. So that's the willows. I want lots of ferns up here, I think. And I think I'm going to want to change the texture underneath those trees differently. But I'll come back to that. All right, so let's put the maples on this same one. One, two, three, four. So this one's going to be less frequent, I think. So let's make this 40 with a 40 location increment. Okay, 
so Yolan, I don't know if you watched my video on, uh, it was just a test video on making uh, explosions go off in time with the music. Um, if you get that 5-1 thing um, and you, uh, you'd need an audio, oh, press the wrong button. You'd need an audio spatializer for the music. Um, but that might be quite, pretty cool if you pick the right track um it's got quite a, a, a broad spatial um effect in it that might be quite cool and you could you could time them so that they were arriving in different parts of your audio spectrum it should be pretty awesome does the asset have i didn't look at it in enough detail because i just listened heard the reverb and ran away um does it have a way of of moving the position in the in the three D space, or are they just encoded to be in particular positions? I've got bushes under my water and trees. Look, huh? Deal with that later. Okay, it's looking better. Okay, so now we need, do we have ferns in any of these packs? There must be ferns in the forest pack. There are no ferns in the forest pack. Holy moly, how can that be? There must be ferns. They're just WAV files, are they? Okay. Yeah, in that case, I, 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 yeah. Yeah, they must be encoded into the individual channels, like you say. Yeah, I'm not, not sure about the utility of that. See, that's only going to make things worse because what you're going to end up with is your source sound is going to be positioned in 3D, but your reverb is also going to be positioned in 3D, but reverb doesn't come from a single spot. It comes from everywhere it's echoing from. Um, so, are they under bushes? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Well, I searched for for the word. Well, I, I said ferns. That was my problem. Look, I I had an S on the end of my fern. So there's loads of procedural worlds ones. There is a texture for a fern in the forest pack. So there must be some in there somewhere. They're just not showing up. So why are they not showing up? Fern 01, where's that living? Sample scene assets. Nope. All right, we're gonna have to hunt for them. Um, not in meadow. Beech trees, bushes, prefabs. Only the cherries in there. I want to do those, but I want ferns as well. Maybe in details. Nope. Foliage and grass. Ferns. We found them. Why did that not appear on my search? That was weird. Ooh, there's a whole load of different grasses in there. They look nice. It's good. Got some ivies. Some plants generally. Shaggy spider. All right. <laughs> I need your new prefab browser, do I? Okay. You really need to jot down what your workflow for stuff is. I was trying to figure out what, what how you do your uh, package manager stuff the other day. Um, and I've, I think I've found my way through. I, I definitely have something that I'm, I'm using and I'm happy with. I don't know if it's the way that you're recommending, though. A full prefab hierarchy condensed to only directories with prefabs in. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. So it's kind of like um, when I do um, type prefab, I find that really useful, except that there's no hierarchy here and you have to go and click on something to find the hierarchy so what you're saying is it's the equivalent of that but it's giving me a, a hierarchy of folders as well 
that is pretty cool if that's what you're doing okay so i need my island bush spawner now exactly all right i look forward to that is that part of package manager or is that a separate asset get these ferns in oops uh train tree fern I should really try out for flora Adam keeps making a big thing about how awesome it is. I should probably try it out. Spawn local. It would make sense in AM, but it's a separate asset right now. Building it so I can easily add snaps. Okay. Yeah, this, the, there is something to, set, to be said for them being separate assets, especially with something like Package Manager, because you'll be able to... Um, Excuse me. You'd be able to easily have package ma package manager install them as extensions almost, and so you could integrate them into the same UI, but have them separate installations. Um, because you know, I, I don't want bloat around my code around my projects, so I should be able to decide what I want and what I don't want. So if I want your prefab manager, then I could install it, and it's no longer bloat to me. Plus, you get to charge me twice. Not a lot of ferns coming in here. That's definitely a bug. The first tree is always called New Tree One. All right, so all right, package man is already built to be extensible. Cool. We'll do it that way then, because you know, even if it's um. You know, if it's a, an extra few dollars, but it's super useful, then that's fair enough, isn't it? Especially if they could still be operate independently of package manager of asset manager as well, that would be even better, but might be difficult. So it's not documented. So when you say it's extensible, does that mean I could extend it if I had such a desire? Hmm. Don't want to do the ferns this way because they're all going to spawn as separate plants. Oops, didn't mean to clear everything. Oh well, it's time I did a full spawn anyway. All right, cool. I could do. Hmm. I'm not quite sure what I would do. I'll bear that in mind though. Why have I not spawned? Did I not click it? Oh, because I'm only on one thing, not the whole biome.
I really do want to look at the code. I'm not buying it if it's a DLL. That's my rule. Occasionally I break it and I regret it every time. Well, maybe not every time, but most times. This is a DLL what I'm using right now and it annoys the hell out of me. Oh, don't you worry about how messy it is. <laughs> uh, so there's, there's only Chris of Yonder Nauts Games who doesn't have any messy code anywhere. You know, I, I, <laughs> I found a comment in his code that said to do, and I can't remember what it was. Um, so I pinged him on his Discord and said, Chris, Chris, you've got to sort this out. There's a to do in your code. And and he, he responded with a suitable, oh my God, no, there can't be, I can't have released it with a to-do in. And then he came back about two minutes later and said, actually, I've already done it. I just forgot to remove the to-do. That's the worst you get out of his code. <laughs> You've bought it at Neo FPS now. You should inspect his code, right? You You will learn a lot about Unity coding from his code. I can't judge it compared to other good Unity coders, but I can tell you I'm learning a lot from it. Maybe some of them are not best practice generally, but um, I am definitely learning a lot. All right, why is this name the wrong thing? Okay, so this is the Highland Spawner. All right, now where's my ferns? Okay, so it isn't working for me with ferns. Ferns need to come in clumps. So I am going to have to do terrain details here. Let's learn flora then. Enable flora. Okay, is that it? I just click this. Enable the procedural world's flora system to replace this unity train detail with a more advanced system during runtime. <laughs> yeah, okay. That doesn't convince me. Click this, it's great. I want to know what it's doing. Are you going to break me? All right, let's try it. Ferns. I've forgotten how to do this. I want to spawn a group together. What's a spawn extension? Don't know, getting distracted. I've forgotten how to do this. There should, there is a way of spawning multiple items at once. Ah, uh, this is it, it's under game objects. Do I want my ferns to be game objects? Ugh. That's not going to work, is it? All right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to square one again. I'm going to do them as trees to work around the lack of terrain detail stuff. I'm going to spawn one. And make it much more common and then I'm going to do a collision collider on those ones that have spawned one two 
1,316 of them have been spawned. Where are they all? There's one. Okay. Okay. So then, add a new rule, put a collision mask in, and don't call it new tree one, call it fern one. And if I add a collision mask, and add in the fern, where the heck is the fern? Must be still called New Tree One. No, it's Fern One. Where is it? Oh, that isn't working. It must be because it's being created in the same spawner. It doesn't see it, maybe. Let's just click off it and go back on. Maybe that'll bring it up. No, so that plans. Oh yeah, there it is. All right. Um, and then visualize that. I thought I had a height rule on this. Where's it gone? Oh, I'm working in the damn lowlands. <sighs> Last it should be in the highlands, which does have my house the map rule on it. So, terrain detail, try that again. Fern one, work around the bug. Okay, looking good. much higher density of this and we want a good fitness because this is going to be the kind of the spawner I don't want a train detail I want a train tree that's why I've got the wrong settings there increment will be higher probability will be lower minimum fitness up a bit how many are we going to get we are going to get A crash. I haven't saved. Please don't crash. Oh, hell. <sighs> Yolan, you didn't remind me to save. 